Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor C. P. Chandra Shekhar from the Center for Economic Studies and Planning at Jawaharlal Nehru University. Thank you for joining us, Professor. We would like to discuss the whole idea of these bank mergers that are happening. Uh, the government has announced that they would be merging Vijaya Bank, Dina Bank, and Bank of Baroda. And they say that it would be a way of cut, uh, tackling the problem of uh, NPAs. So how do you see this? Well, you know, I mean, uh, we must realize that this comes in a context in which the government has tried many things in the past uh, uh, to try and address this problem of non-performing assets. The problem itself is, is quite substantial and uh, got revealed in large measure over the last three to four years when the, the sort of guidelines with regard to recognition of these bad assets were tightened and therefore suddenly you saw this mushrooming of bad assets. Now, normally when you had, have bad assets, uh, what you need to do is you need to try and um, first write off, it's a technical write off and then recoup as much as possible and to the extent that you don't, obviously you need to provision for these, for these bad loans and that eats into the capital of the banks and you've got to recapitalize them. Now, over a long period of time, the government has been recapitalizing but uh, two things have uh, now uh, sort of shorted that process. Uh, first, of course, is the fact that uh, the volume of recapitalization required. And we had an Indra Dhanush plan, for example, for five, four years starting from 2015-16, which is about 70,000 crores. Uh, now we are talking about, the government was talking about some 2.2 .2 lakh crore uh, recapitalization. Now, obviously, if this is occurring in a period in which the government is increasingly uh, adamant about the fact that it is going to stick by its fiscal deficit norms because the very day after the merger was announced, the finance minister also said we are not going to budge from our fiscal deficit target which essentially means that you are going to keep spending down so long as you are not willing to tax which obviously this government is not willing to. So if you cannot recapitalize the banks then obviously you need to find a way of dealing with these assets and uh, the second sort of uh, I mean, not that they occurred sequentially, but second attempt was to try and create uh, asset reconstruction corporations where you sell the bad assets uh, against receipts very often, not against actual cash, at some discount to a reconstruction corporation, which then tries to uh, peddle these assets, uh, recoup a certain amount of money and, and then replace these receipts with, with actual money. Uh, but the issue there is how much of a haircut are you willing to take and it became clear that the demands which were being made by these asset reconstruction corporations was extremely high. And finally, of course, there was talk about setting up a bad bank which finally would have had to be a public sector bad bank and which means that the budget was anyway going to carry, the, the, the taxpayer was anyway going to carry the burden. So in essence, this, is, uh, this merger or this beginning of a process of merger is an attempt to try and create a situation in which the government need not touch its uh, sort of budget in order to be able to recapitalize. Yeah, so it's, so it's, it's in that context that we need to look at uh, this uh, effort to revive this whole, uh, because it's been spoken of before, the idea of merging banks, consolidating banks. Uh, and uh, it's, 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 it's almost clever by half. You take a small bank like Dena, which is in very bad position, which would possibly have had to be completely recapitalized by the government. It had 11% plus net uh, NPA ratio. And you take a, a bank which is also a small bank, but bigger than Dena, which is Vijaya Bank, and which is not doing too badly. It has about a 4% net NPA ratio. You put them together, and the average NPA ratio comes down to about 6.5%. And you hand it over to Bank of Baroda, which has got a 5 point something, but it's so big that when you add it on, Bank of Baroda's net performing assets ratio does not change. Now, there are two or three questions and I'll just stop with that posing those questions. The first question is, what makes the government think that Bank of Baroda doesn't have its own problems? You see, because the idea is what you're going to do is give it a little bit of a carrot, which is Vijaya Bank, in order to be able to take over something which is which no bank will want to take over without it being recapitalized. And so what is the perception or what is, the, what, is the, what is the understanding that Bank of Baroda itself, like most public sector banks, is in a situation which is extremely troubled and should be at the moment focusing on d addressing its own 
5.6 or whatever it is net, net uh, NPA ratio. The second is that, this, you know, the, the point is this is a process that has been credit which has been provided over time. And if there is credit which is provided over a particular period, let us say the period from 2006, 7 to 2008, 9, for example, uh, which has gone bad now, there is no guarantee. In fact, there is a strong li 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 likelihood that as we go further, there would be other non assets which would turn non performing, including in the books of, of, of Bank of Baroda. So, if you say that this is going to be a way with, of without providing money from the government's budget by taxing those who can afford to be taxed and putting your, your banking system back on shape, that is not clear because this problem might not go away. It might just now reappear in, a, in an intensified form in the books of, the, of Bank of Baroda in time to come. And the second is that uh, even to the extent that it remains where it is, the perception that this is going to actually unleash uh, a whole credit wave because the whole idea is credit is not going fast enough, so we need to do something. So, my own perception is that the way the government is planning uh, is, or, or what the government's plan possibly is, is that it, it has been wanting to get these banks off its hands. Okay? And if it wants to get these banks, uh, banks off its hands, there is no way it can do it if the books are not relatively clean. Okay? So, for example, if you take the Southeast Asian crisis of 1997, Indonesian banks went bust, the government took them over, cleaned their books using taxpayers' money and then handed it over to the private sector. So, I do think that you, the government cannot convince itself that this problem is not going to remain, so that it will constantly recur if they happen to be public banks. But if you want to convert these public banks into private banks, you have got to find these, you know, you have got to indulge in all this kind of manipulation to try and fix it that the bank, the balance sheet improves a bit so that you can actually privatize these banks. So, I think that is that's what is on the anvil. But then the NPAs are not really going anywhere. Yes, but what you are trying to do is you are trying to reduce because finally you are looking at the average NPAs, you are trying to reduce the average NPAs. Let us be clear, these are ratios. The volume of NPAs is not going anywhere as you said because you know you are just adding up the NPAs of Dena, <laughs> Vijaya and BOB. You know, so they are not going away, but the point is you are trying to make it because you are really looking at it relative to the total advances. Okay. So, when you take this merged entity, you are going to give it a, this is an amalgamation, it is not even a merger. So, you are actually going to have a new entity, you know, bank of I do not know what and that entity is going to have well not too bad. So, your, the, the whole perception is let me take the ones which there is no way I can sell and fold it in with some, with some, you know, a little bit of gravy like Vijaya Bank, fold it in into a bigger bank, so that it would become possible for the government to actually wipe its hands of this problem. Because once you got rid of your development finance institutions and you needed big projects to be financed, you were going to have to push the banks to do it. And if are the banks are in the public sector, you would do it and they, you end up with this problem. So, you leave it to the private sector and uh, that is obviously have growth implications, but that's that's tomorrow. Today you'd have it off your hands. And and how would this play out for say the uh, customers of these banks? You see, the, the, there are there are two kinds of uh, issues involved here. The one is, of course, there would be uh, a transition period when they've got to integrate their systems. One advantage is, of course, uh, most banks now, or almost all banks, are uh, you know, or the, or the bigger banks are in the in the sort of uh, under the core banking system. So, integrating it becomes, integrating the accounts becomes easier, but till such time as the accounts get integrated, there would be some delays, some minor hitches, etc. But the larger issue is going to be that, you know, you're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, cleaning these books is also going to mean you're going to cut costs, you're going to replace. So, there's, what are you going to do with all these people who come as employers? The employee base is going to be now that much larger. Uh, the employee base is going to be that much larger without the volume of NPAs having, you know, gone down. So you'll be looking for ways of cost cutting, etc. And uh, you know, there's 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 an officer cadre, there is uh, senior management who's going to ask to work under whom, etc. So there, there there would be these problems which would obviously affect client service in in different ways. But as of now, there is no reason to believe that it would involve a financial loss. It, it, would, it, it could involve some degree of inconvenience uh, and it is only when uh, the government decides how exactly it is going to resolve the rest of the problem 
you know that there was the FRDI bill in which yeah. there was a whole idea of a, of a bail-in, which obviously was threatening depositors, which is why the government had to go back on it. And, and so you mentioned about the employees. Uh, would they, I mean, do you see a possible similar situation to when the SBI uh, mergers happened? Yeah, I, I even in the SBI, I don't think it's played out in full because what would what you do is that you know if you if you consolidate, create larger banks. Now let's be clear. Huh? Vijaya Bank is a small bank, so you can't say that small banks are bad because, because Vijaya Bank is doing okay, that's why you're giving Vijaya Bank along with Jenna. So the evidence is clear, there is no relationship between whatever you want to call it, some notion of efficiency, whatever that might be, uh, profitability, etc. and size. There is no direct relationship, you can have small banks and in, in fact most countries have banks of different sizes which operate in different niches. And you know they operate to reach credit to very different kinds of people, etc. So the point is that uh, the the idea would be you consolidate and use technology to reduce costs by shrinking the manpower base. But that means that you shift to a, a different kind of banking. It becomes a kind of banking which is uh, you know in which uh, accessing uh, you know. A human voice is only possible through a telephone if you manage to get through after waiting in queue, etc. And uh, so it's going to change the very nature of service. But it also means much, much for these employees. You know, the, the point is that uh, fortunately we happen to be in an organized sector which still has some, you know, some rules which uh, which apply to uh, trying to retrench workers who have regular contracts. But then. Uh, I mean, things are changing. Uh, it's it's a different kind of government. It's a different kind of economic philosophy. So, uh, it's it's all it's all being done in ad hoc manner, step by step. But the direction is clear. The direction is one in which you finally don't want banks to play the social role as instruments of development, which you had given them. And uh, then you might as well have. Why should it be in the public hands? You hand it over to the private sector and uh, hope that they make a better deal as far as uh, the bank is concerned. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And thank you for watching News Click.